everyone. Uh, welcome to the Oaks Public Schools regular monthly school board meeting. It's Tuesday, May 10th, 2022 at 6.56 a.m. We're meeting in the Oaks Public Schools conference room as well as via Zoom. Uh, I'll call the meeting to order. Oh, wait a minute. Before we do that, we have a public meeting. I'll call that meeting to order. Uh, that's the three and five year planning meeting, uh, which is required by law every other year. Um, and uh, we'll start with public input and discussion that that was in the board members packet. Anybody got that page number on that? Here we go. It's page 22 of your packet. Are you going to lead us through this? I can. We did make a couple of quick adjustments to it. Um, as far as the, and I'll try and remember them as I went through, so if I forget, I think um, I highlighted. Help me out. Um, as far as the enrollment, these are numbers. To be honest with you, the pre-K and the kindergarten, those are just guesses from me. Uh, and I know I asked Michelle to kind of look through them as well, and, and both the principals have looked through that. But we're we're just throwing a number out that is close to what we're, we're seeing for projections. It's just a guess. So when you start to get down to the lower part, so if you scroll, if you scroll in, uh, you'll see right in here, uh, it looks like we're going to be dropping quite dramatically. Um, small towns seem to always do that. I don't know why bigger towns are always growing exponentially and small towns are shrinking exponentially when we start looking at these numbers, um, but it usually doesn't project out as close to that as what it's showing. Could we see a decline? Um, we obviously know next year is going to be a small class. Uh, uh, kindergarten coming in, there's roughly uh, 23 or 20, 23 to 25. So that's why you're seeing uh, the drop in, in numbers there. So if we keep scrolling. These state assessments, they came from some state sites. Um, so that's where all these all this data comes from. It compares the district to the state with the uh, first one is the state assessment with English language arts. And the math and then also science. Uh, this one here is just automatically put in there. It has nothing to do with school, it's state and national. And then the ACT is, is compared to national. And the only thing I can think of, I know I had a question of why are we putting the national scores in there instead of the state scores. The only thing I can think of is because the state assessment compares us to our state and then the ACT is going to compare us to our national site. So it kind of gives you that both perspectives, a smaller and then a bigger perspective. That's the only thing I could think of, of why it was put in there like that. So, um, these classes, uh, Mr. Beta helped me put those together. Uh, obviously the enrollments are current year and then what is projected moving forward. These are your AP and dual credit. So these will be your advanced classes that are being offered currently. Uh, obviously, if we miss some, it's very possible. Or if we delete or add some as the years go, uh, these are going to change, but it won't change on here. This is kind of basically a set thing for the next few years. Then it's our extra classes that are above and beyond uh, everything that is above and beyond what is required to graduate from the state and also from us. Those are just uh, extra classes. And then it talks about some different curriculum questions. So if you wanna, if I know the board had a chance to read through that. I don't know if the public has any input onto that. Basically, are there, based on the enrollment projections, will the district have the staffing resource necessary to offer the elementary and middle school instruction? Um, a lot of these are simple questions. The number two is a little bit more. I'll let you just read it instead of me trying to read it. And we're just taking input if there's anything we should add. So a change from what we have in our packet? Nothing on this yet. Yep, I do. I'm sure I'll forget that. Next one is our school indicators. Um, these are going to be like our extracurriculars. So the first one is going to be more athletic based, and then you have the academic based shortly after or right after that. Um, it does say that we are offering counseling, distance education, early childhood education. Uh, we do not have a gifted intelligence program at this time. Kindergarten is required and it's offered in-house. 
And then we have the library specialist, speech and drama, it gives the numbers. Um, looks like we got to get the numbers from, uh, I still haven't got the numbers from the CT center. So those will be added in there before it's finalized. I probably have them, they're probably just stuck in my email. I haven't transferred them yet. So just so you're aware. We did an add a resource officer this year. Last time last time there was not Jason. Okay. There you go. Um, we do not have a social worker. Uh, special education is required, and we do have that in Destrick from Cheyenne Valley Special Education Unit. We do have a student performance strategist. And we do offer transportation and then the questions that come along with that. I want to read through those real quick. And we're taking input. Student interventionist and remediation, um, more or less, this is going to be, uh, this is a new section that was added. To be honest with you, I had this pretty much done and then I went back and looked at the new one uh, and this whole section was added. So we, we did update that. Uh, numbers are conceivably low for, for what we're looking at. Um, keep scrolling. Then we did talk about, we did add the SRO program uh, and this was one of the changes is um, you must have, you must not be on the live one. No. Okay. No. The suspension and expulsions, it was not the reason that you guys added the SRO. It was because of the uh, uh, growing number of behavioral problems. So that was switched to that. Did you change the wording? Yeah. It it's as, uh, yeah, instead of higher A, it's as, or uh, higher. Yeah, it's you changed higher. the word higher to hired and yeah. some wording changes because um, as I mentioned to Mr. Getz, I hadn't, I didn't recall getting any data about numbers of suspensions and expulsion related to hiring a school resource officer, but just behavior issues that required more than what our staff was prepared to handle. So that was the first change. So it's a, a, the way it reads now is the district hired an SRO to help with the rising number of behavior issues. Any changes in that? Oh, hear none. Um, next thing is the student success indicators. Uh, these are again pulled off of different websites. The the trick to a graduation rate is. Uh, just so you guys, are, the board knows and the public knows too, is those numbers, it doesn't go off of um, somebody that's a, a senior. It goes as soon as they enter as a freshman, if they go and transfer to another school and drop out, it still counts against us. That's kind of a goofy thing that the state does. So just be aware of that. Those numbers are, are almost impossible to get to 100 because of that simple reason. We have no control of those students that leave. Uh, even if they transfer and they go to another state, if they drop out, it's still a reflection on us. It can be a goofy thing that the state does for us. So just so you're aware of that. Um, enrollment numbers into college is staying pretty consistent around that 65%. Uh, I would say that's pretty, pretty average for most schools. Uh, and that's just from hearing from other superintendents around. And then the indicators for that. And the financials come into play. Um, a lot of these numbers, um, April has looked over these as well. Uh, we pulled those numbers from the current budget. So those are that's why you're seeing the projected. Those will be coming off of what is into uh, what has been given to you guys already. So, right here. Expenditures per student. Again, it's just taking our general fund expenditures and dividing it by the number of students gives us that number. Looks like I got an extra $2 sign in there. So that's completed. 
mills is pretty straightforward. We only have a couple or two sections that we mill, levy mills in currently. Um, for the last few years, this is all past history. Uh, and then what those generate, what the different dollar amounts are generated from each one. And there will be some financial questions or anything okay. staffing um, again that goes through and shows current and then what's projected please remember that a lot of these things are three and five year this one here is just the next three years so uh, i'm not sure why it bounces back and forth like that but some of those things are it's current year next year three years from now and then five years from now so that's the difference between that Support staff, I did not fill in everything in, the, in between the K-6. I didn't split them out just because of they bounce back and forth. So I just put them as a, our total number. So you'll see that's why that is done. As you move down, there's more projected staff. And then the administrative staff, I don't foresee that changing. Uh, the one thing that we did have is we did lower uh, in the questions. So question. Hasn't changed anything, but we did we will be eliminating one elementary teacher if that was a position that was created as a for help with the overflow or the larger numbers um, in that one class of, of instructional needs. So that was why that class was split. Nothing has changed otherwise. We'll continue to monitor that yearly. Facility planning. So this kind of goes through what is the facility being used. Uh, a lot of these numbers, I, I'm not gonna lie, I stole them from last three and five year because it hasn't changed much. So I was able to continue other than updating the number, the, the year of the facility. And then there's the facility questions. I think this one had some changes, if I remember correctly. What page number are we on? Go to the bottom. Okay, I had a change on number 25. There was just a typo. Can I back up a second as we go through the staffing questions? Shouldn't number one just be a yes? It could be. Because then at number two is if yes to question one, then give the explanation. Would you like me move everything from question one down to question that's, two? That's the way I was reading it. I don't know how anybody else interprets it. That's the way I was interpreting it. So do you want me to move everything that was in question one to just slide it down? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Okay. And then the last line in question two, evaluated and adjusted as the district changes. That's the change that I have to make. I think you did that. This, this one right here. You, you already yep. did that. I already changed it. Okay. okay. Was that everything on? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry Can I jump? No. Nope. That's a good catch. Facility planning, then. Any questions on that? Um, we did make a change on that. I thought, the right? next page. On the, on the question. Okay. Regarding uh, page 27, re referring to the track. Oh, okay. I, I thought that the way it was written, it sounded like it was really un, in progress to change to at the football field to the track. And that was not my, that's yeah, not. That, that wasn't the intention. So what it's changed to is if the football field, it was to be added in the future, the interior of the track would need to be crowned for the football field. In addition to the field, the host, to host a varsity football game, there will be, there will, yeah, let me try it again. In addition to the foot, in addition to the field, to host a varsity football game, there will be more work to the buildings and lighting. Well, I say that the buildings and lighting would need to be added. So for 
obvious reasons of uh, locker room and that kind of stuff, concessions and making sure everything is up to par. Bathrooms. So this last page is nothing more than just a review of everything that we did up above. Any other changes? And that was compliments of April and the two principals and myself helped put a lot of that together. So just so you're aware. And that's what this meeting is for everybody else that we have with. So. All right. Any any other questions or input on the three and five year plan document? And do we what have to this? approve that at do we have to approve it? No, it's on our right. agenda. Yeah, once you get to the agenda. Just for public comment. Yeah. So we can go on and if when soon as everybody's done. you have others, we can review that when we get to it. Okay. All right. If there's no further uh, comments from the public, I'll adjourn the public meeting on the three and five year plan. And now I'll call the meeting to order at 7.12 a.m. Uh, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board members, the agenda was in your packet, and we would like to add an item under action items, item J, you will add business manager duties, and you'll you have a paper handout in front of you related to that. Are there any other changes to the agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve the agenda with that addition? Nagel moves to approve the agenda with the addition of J business manager duties under action items. Is there a second? Uh, but seconds. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Um, Recognition of visitors. Welcome all visitors. We have staff present as well as city uh, officials, our school resource officer and um, uh, police chief. Online, it looks like we have Jason Wolf, Kayla Marodi, Naomi O'Brien, and Rhonda Day. So welcome and thank you for attending. Uh, there was no public communication in our packet. Is there anything? All right, so in your packet and also via email, you've had reports from the technology director, food service, maintenance and transportation, activities director, personalized learning coach, principal's reports, and uh, the superintendent report. Were there any questions or anything that should be highlighted on any of the reports? I was just gonna highlight the people who are Mr. Getz and I have thought of this prior to that and uh, Dave's report on uh, the time frame of the science floor. The bids, everything is already a couple months behind. Um, in my mind, if after we, if it looks like it's not going to be possible to get completed over the summer, I think we should have in our minds that nothing says it has to be done right now. We can do it the following summer. Make everything work a lot better with the timeline and the budget. Or it's not going to cave in. No. Good. That's a relief. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions or comments or anything we want to highlight? Um, sure. Okay. Since I wrote this, uh, just so everybody knows, we were approved for summer school with the state. So we'll be reimbursed for that, uh, both on the driver's ed side and also the elementary side. So that would be a, something that is that that is a good thing. Okay, we had um, we have some information here from uh, in our uh, that Mrs. Sell handed out on um, proficiency awards. Are you wanting to present that? Yes. yes. I in my packet I proficiency. mentioned that I would bring some more data. So. Um, looks like they killed a tree, but 
last time I had them together and it was just requested, it was a little bit hard to read. So you've got the ELA scores, the math scores, and the science scores for the elementary. And this is just the preliminary data. So later on when they do the school um, report card online, these probably will be different because some of the kids don't get considered into the formula. So if a child hasn't been in our school the entire year, their numbers are, are, are left out or discounted or there's some formula that they follow. So what I included was um, this year's NDSA and then I included last year's NDSA so you can see the difference. So um, obviously this year's fourth graders were last year's third graders. And um, so you can look at those for, again, ELA, math and science. So this year science, this is the first year that our kids have taken the science test in the spring online just like a, the ela and the math so this was our first year doing that i think it went okay didn't it mr shaw okay. it went okay yeah when we saw our scores we were like so um i'm just open to any questions if anybody has any questions or is there anything in here that's alarming to you um not alarming it always concerns me when we our goal is to obviously score above the state right um and we scored below the state in fourth grade in science and in ELA. Um, but if you look at last year's, it was the same thing for last year. They, they scored below the state in those. Um, but if you look at our sixth graders for ELA, and I mean, I math too, I mean, we scored significantly above the state, like 26 percentage points above the state, 22 percentage points above the state in math. So the kudos to the kids and to the teachers for all the different things that they're doing in order to um, perform that well. So, you know, it's not an easy test to take. <laughs> it's long. And we learned lessons on it. The first group to take the test this year was the fourth graders, and we learned some lessons on um, guidance for the kids um, prior to taking the test to remind them that don't just write one sentence for the writing. And that's for the ELA portion where if they end up scores back and you can see the writing, our kids putting ones out of 10, zero out of 10, because they wrote like one or two sentences, right? Because that's the easy, easy route. So when fifth and sixth took it before the teachers, you know, they just reminded them like it says multiple paragraphs. We're talking paragraphs because the kids know how to write full paragraphs. And I think with that reminder, that made a difference for our kids significantly because our writing scores went up quite a bit. So the reports are um. I think they're the best reports we've gotten. We can at least use it for programming. In the past, I felt like this was just a waste of days, but I really think it's gotten a lot better since it's aligned to our state standards. And, you know, it doesn't take us four hours of test to take either, right? Most of the time we can get it done, Rox. Do you guys get done maybe in one and a half setting, one setting? One and a half. So it's not as rigorous, or I should say rigorous, as time consuming as in the past and the data that we get is instantaneous. I was missing a few ELA scores because I think what they did, from what I understand, is they would like hand pick as a sample some of the um, writing samples to um, look at those closer than just machine scoring and probably just to see if everything's calibrated. That's my guess. And so then we just got um, all of the scores from them. But it's also um, adaptive. So, you know, not everybody's, we'd all be taking different questions at different times. We might be getting the same pool of questions, you know, and both. We might be getting them at different times depending on where we're at. So that part is nice too. It's not you know, the same exact test. So um, yeah, but you, you mentioned that the this the results are instantaneous, mm -hmm. which I don't know if that, that means instant, but yeah. in my earlier years on the school board, yes. the, these tests would be taken in the spring and you wouldn't see anything until fall, no. right? Right. We wouldn't see any. I mean it could be in mid fall when we would finally see the results. So it was pretty much discounted. It was just like a hoop to jump through, but at least now we can use that information and we can actually dig deeper into them because it will break it down. So the math is broken down into four or five areas, depending on the grade, you know, on the strand, ELA is broken down. Like I said, the writing was broken down and it'll tell you like, how did your kids do on um, uh, the conventions of writing? How did they do on their planning? How were their details? So you can break it down to look at it and see those different areas. So then that helps us um, as we prep for, you know, the next year or later on that year, or what we need to do. Like I said, we learned when the fourth graders took it and their scores came back and it was like, why are they getting zeros and ones and realizing like they were writing one or two sentences. Well, you just didn't have the meat there for them to even look at to score it. So right away we were getting, you know, low scores. So 
I, I feel that this is a much better testing for us um, as far as, I mean, we have to do it right. So it's awesome that we can use the data. And actually the scores are usually in, at the end of the day, I was able to go in and look and see how our kids did and I could break them down like, okay, so my teachers are really good about saying, hey, let us know where our kids are struggling and where their strengths are. And we can break that down. So, so you mentioned the fourth grade, you know, yeah. their writing skills. Mm -hmm. Is that do you think that's part of the reason that their proficiency is? Oh yes. Lower yes. And um, like I said, we um, when we went in and broke those scores down, we were just shocked. My teachers were <laughs> you know, very concerned. You know, how did we score so low? And at one point we were like 22 percent proficient. Well, some of those scores later on rolled in because I think there was more to the writing, so they could grade it. You know, versus where if they got like one or two or three sentences, you know, of course it's going to not be able to score it very well. In fact, they wouldn't even score it. They're only one sentence. So um, I think if we would have caught that before, you know, that the, the teachers could have said, this can't just be one or two sentences. You have to write multiple paragraphs. We would have scored much better. And that's so, I, I guess it's just one of those things like we tell our kids on that growth mindset, even though this was our big assessment, we've learned, you know, so then we improved and we used our mistakes to get better at. So, so if you, you looked at say stars tests and other indicators that you used, would you, would our, are, are you seeing similar results um, in fourth graders or are, do you see better scores in, in other assessments? Well, I would say that they're probably their um, percentages wouldn't obviously line up. Like not only 26% of our kids are proficient in the star. We're up, you know, in the 50s for reading. Our math is much higher than that. But um, I wouldn't say this exact number, but you know, that some of these are very like our sixth graders, more than 76% of our kids are proficient. So I mean those higher numbers are there. So I would say it lines up not the exact numbers, but you would see the same trends. And star but our star is just so much more frequent that we can use that data to do the programming and to change and to add or you know do some different things versus just once a year for this so any other questions is there any comparison on these against national stuff no because these this okay so this is our our state scores right on right. our state standards right so yeah. is there anything that we Oh, our, our stars. Okay. Our star is national. national. Yes, yes. So you know that's the thing when and when we get the star that um, even though we use it here in our district and um, it is nationally normed with hundreds of thousands of kids and so that's why it's really hard that you know we have our district um, the teachers have their curriculum based measures and we've got some of our other assessments here at school in our day to day but this thing with star is it tells us you know where our kids are in we have a pretty high bar. I mean, our kids perform well here and we have these expectations. And when we do the STAR, it's helpful because then you can see like, um, do we need to do some adjusting or, and I never want us to lower the bar, but you know, there might come a point where we're thinking, okay, these kids are really struggling, but the STAR gives us that picture of, you know, where kids are at across the nation, even though we have higher standards, I think we do. Then. Anything else for Mrs. Sell? I didn't have a question yes, related to this. Um, so we hired an extra parent to make sure we had two on the playground at all times. Yes. Is that working out well? It is. It's better to have the two out there. And we also changed our recess schedule. So instead of having three or more grades at a time, the only time when we have a mass number of kids out there is in the mornings. Um, otherwise, we only have two classes out there. So K and one do recess, K but two and three do recess, four and five, sometimes six is thrown in there for a short amount of time. But we have a smaller number of classes. Okay. Yeah, you know. The um, para hiring is just so difficult though because we've had so much change. So you start at the beginning of the year and you, you work on your systems and stuff like that. And we've changed pairs. how many times over the year. I wish we could just, yeah. and it's just the job market everywhere, right? That I, if we hire in the beginning of the year and if we could have that continuity, um, but that's just not where we're at. So, you know, I'm hoping next year that those numbers will stay stable for us. <laughs> Everybody will for that, right? All right. Anything else for Mrs. Sell? Thank you. Yep. Any other questions uh, for Mr. Beta, um, Mr. Getz? I don't have a question, but I'd just like to highlight that we did have a teacher that got the Dickey County yeah. Teacher of the Year. 
Congratulations to Ms. Trevor. Yeah. Awesome. As well as JC Prowska. Um, yeah. Sounds like it was a very, very close race for this uh, distinguished student of the year. So very, very exciting um, for her and for our district. And 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 thanks to all staff, coaches, bus drivers, everybody for doing all of the reshuffling with weather and buses and, uh, and activities. These spring activities are important, but they are they are a grind. All right. Uh, if there are no more questions, is there a motion to approve the administrative reports? I'll make a motion to approve. Four moves to approve the administrative reports. Is there a second? I'll second. Rosendahl seconds. Any discussion? Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Moving on to action items. The first item is election workers. Invitation to bid in my package. Oh, I see. Do we have to? Oh, I see. Thank you. I was wondering that too. Thanks. <laughs> just so you had a copy Thanks. of what was. Okay. All right. Uh, so, election workers uh, for June 7th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. here in uh, the central office. Uh, Estimated hours from 10.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. at $10 an hour. Uh, judges to appoint are Randa Gamer, Carol Wolf, and the clerks are Barb Boyle and Kay Opp. Uh, is there a motion to approve those election workers for June 7th? I'll move to approve. Heimbach moves to approve the election workers. Is there a second? Second. Nagel seconds. Any discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Um, okay. Um, there is in our packets, there is a, a resignation from um, Oaks Public Oaks School Board and Superintendent Getz. It is with sadness in my heart that I'm resigning my position at Oaks Public School as a second grade teacher and head boys basketball coach here at Oaks Public Schools for the school year 22-23. I thoroughly enjoyed my time here in Oaks and cannot thank you enough for giving me the opportunity to become a tornado. I truly can't thank you all enough for welcoming me into the community and the Oaks School District. I was very honored to be called a tornado and I honestly loved working here. Thank you and sincerely, Rod Kramer. Um, we will uh, need to approve that um, and have a discussion about potential liquidated damages and maybe you have a recommendation with regard to that. Um, is there a motion regarding that? Uh, Nagel moves to approve the resignation of Rod Kramer. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Rosenthal seconds. Is there any discussion? Uh, I would just say that um, I really appreciated Coach Kramer and heard nothing but good things about him as a teacher. I was really pleased that he was with us, and I will I will move I will vote to accept his resignation with deep regret. Anything else? Any further discussion? Uh, do we need to make a reference to, to um, uh, uh, liquidated, liquidated damages? Um, I think I would add that in there. Okay. The part of that, yes. Uh, let's see. If, if that's what the board who made the motion, Nathan? Yeah. Okay. Is it acceptable that we would add to the motion that we would consider liquidated damages if, if any yeah. occur? Okay. And who seconded? Um, now, would that be acceptable to you? Yes. Okay. Um, so we will investigate then uh, the liquidated damages and assess as appropriate. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. And what you had an item to add? Yeah, I just wanted to 
just make everybody aware because I went, came in yesterday. Uh, Naomi O'Brien has moved to the um, special ed side, so she will no longer be a district pair. She's moving to the special ed, so that would be technically another resignation. But it, it's it's a classified position, so it doesn't it doesn't come need, to the board. Okay, it doesn't but need board I wasn't action. I was able to put it in here, so I just wanted to make sure that you guys are aware. All right. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. So for your information that we have. We, we stole the special ed pair up to become a <laughs> kindergarten teacher. So now the special ed took our pair, our district pair to go cover that position. So, so now we'll be opening up at the end of the year. Um, are we anywhere with the replacement for Mr. Kramer? Or um, we're still in the works of that. Uh, I know we do have one applicant. We, we're just in the process of getting it opened up. So we're kind of waiting to see what we get for applicants through this year, this week, and then probably next week we'll start with an interview. Um, unless something's changed, but I know. I, just, I didn't realize it wasn't open yet. So I'm like, why are we not getting applicants? <laughs> I saw you yesterday and I'm like, we've gotten one applicant, we're not getting any more. So now that when I talk to people, I'm like, oh, that makes me feel a little better. Well, not just open yet. You couldn't open it until we, we. We can open it, but we can't hire until sure. this has been accepted. Okay, so I feel better now. <laughs> okay. so. All right. Um, also, in your packet, there are three new teacher contracts. Um, they were, since they can't always read the signatures, they have uh, Leslie Deflipson, Riley Lokes, and I missed the first one, Cheska, uh, Cheska Bacani. Okay, so those three uh, are teacher contracts and they do need to be approved. So uh, I will entertain a motion to approve those three teacher contracts which are in your packet. I'll make a motion. Uh, Rosendahl moves to approve the three new teacher contracts. One is not new to us, but new, newly, uh, newly signed. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, Heimbach seconds. Is there any discussion? Um, do you want? To, yeah, please clarify. I, I notice extracurricular assignments, which aren't really extracurricular, and they asked Mr. Getz that. So, so Leslie was on a five sevens contract and she was doing our tech integration as an hourly wage and this next year she's going to also take over the el position so she will be uh, i've moved her to a full-time position instead of the five sevens and then she won't be paid hourly for the tech integration or the el which has been done in the past this way it's just part of her job um, the other part is then she is also now a full-time teacher so at the end of the day mr Peter would be able to use her as as a teacher to help with one of those classes to help bring uh, tornado time. So there we go. So to help with that too, uh, where this year she was not able to do that because she wasn't under contract. So uh, the only time she will be paid hourly for the tech integration would be during the summertime because that's off of school contract. So just so you're right. Okay. Sounds like a reasonable solution. Any other discussion? Uh, I have a question. So what do we do for new teachers? Do we have some sort of mentoring program for them? And yeah, so there's a couple different ones. Uh, I know in house there, we always try to pair them up with somebody, at least that's what we've been working with. Um, and then if they're brand new to the teaching, there's also the state uh, mentoring program. So uh, they usually get paired with somebody in house for that, but sometimes they, they can be paired with outside, it just depends on where we're at. Interesting, because the PCBL has its own dynamics yeah. the way they teach. I know that that was one of the things that we discussed this last week up in, in Fargo on our district design team day. Uh, was that we need to look at our onboarding and, and how much uh, we need to uh, correlate that with Greg as well. Uh, so not only do they have their their um, sponsor or their their person mentor, mentor um, Greg would also be there as like a second mentor in the piece of the elbow. So it's kind of in a in a way they're going to end up with two mentors. Okay, I don't believe we voted yet. So any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Uh, Re-entry plan, this was in your packet. Um, thankfully, no changes needed to that. I accept the date, right? Accept the date. Thank goodness. Unless there's something else you have to change, but no. it is something we have to do every six months is until the federal dollars are gone. Oh, okay. That was my question. We need to still keep doing this. Um, 
All right. So, any questions on the reentry plan? If uh, or is there a motion to approve the readoption of the plan? I'll move to time buck moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Thorpe seconds. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. Now we're at the three to five, three and five year plan. Um, we went through it at the public meeting earlier. Is there, are there any discussions or uh, questions or additional items? Did you get all your questions answered? Okay. At, uh, it seems to me that in the past when, and this is only every two years that we have to uh, review and approve this. It seems like we have typically done it in uh, June and um, Mr. Getz asked if we could do it today. That's why I hadn't thought of it until um, he brought it to my attention last week and we we added it to the agenda for today. So any, uh, is there a motion then to approve the three and five year plan as we reviewed and was revised this morning? I'll make a motion to approve. Thorpe moves to approve the three and five year plan. Is there a second? A second. I'm about seconds. Any discussion? Any discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. All right, uh, basketball coach. Um, we now have the head boys basketball coach position officially has been resigned and um, the girls basketball coach was uh, graciously taken on by Superintendent Getz last year. Um, we have in front of us uh, the, uh, a, a procedure that was uh, adopted by the board uh, in the last two or three years when head coaching positions have come open. So we, we need to have a conversation about this procedure, clarification, uh, what what do you need from us? I, I, my, my biggest thing is I just, because I know that there's been talk in the past that one time it's more in-house and it uh, has preference than it has out of house or just whoever's best for the position. And I, I just want to make sure I'm coming in with the correct understanding because I know it's went back and forth a little bit uh, just from my experience uh, so far this in this process. Um, so I just wanted to, if I could have some clarification from the board of what where they were going with that. Okay, who was, some, several of us were on the board when this was adopted. Yeah, four yeah. of us were. So what are your recollections? My recollections are we wanted to get the best candidate possible wherever they came from, instead of always just filling it with who was available. If there is, if there is candidates out there that are willing and able and have the knowledge. Correct, yeah, the, the best candidate. Okay. So the other part to that then is, it says that we're supposed to allow incoming and current staff to apply. So does that mean that we can't hire until after we have all staff hired? I'm just trying to make sure I'm understanding it so I don't move something up according to the procedure. I don't. I don't think so. As soon as we, as soon as we open it, and we have a number of candidates. We can go and start interviewing. Is what I'm understanding. I believe so. And my yeah. recollection is that there, there were members of the public that believed that the district would only consider uh, in on staff candidates uh, rather than candidates uh, potential candidates from the public and. I don't believe that was, there was never any policy that said we wouldn't consider candidates outside of the district. And well, you know, I think in many ways, my personal belief is that it's great to hire someone from on staff that is trained and who works with, who's in our buildings all day, every day, and who is uh, trained to work and experienced in working with students and student athletes. 
um, that it was that's only one consideration. Okay. So perfect. Um, I, I, in my view, we can open at, at, with at least the, the head boys basketball coaching position. And um, you know, you've spoken to your your willingness to continue with the girls position, head coaching position. But um, if others, if there's someone else that can do it uh, well and relieve you to do your other job uh, better and more fully, uh, I would be open to that as well. Uh, and, and I'm only one board member. So it may be that having two possible positions at the same time might yield more candidates. I don't know. Comments? I think knowing that Mr. Getz would step up and take the position that we should open it. Okay. Do you need anything else from us? No. So if I'm understanding, just clarification, make sure I understand, open both boys and girls positions and, and we'll take who is the best cap. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And you would still be. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't yeah. want anybody to think that I don't want it. I just don't want that to be filled in that. I just want to make sure that we're giving the best opportunity for the district. And I do know that my priorities and, and is the superintendent job. So Sometimes it would be cool of uh, me to step away if we have a really good qualified candidate. Yeah, so if, 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 if we, we have. have. If we do. Yeah. Best for both worlds. That's what I want. It's best for, best for the girls and the best for the school. All right. Uh, so no action needed. Clarification has been given. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, moving on then to the discussion on 2022-23 lunch prices. The uh, information was in your packet. Is there anything anybody wants to highlight, bring to our attention before we take action on this? Yeah, I guess I will jump in real quick. Um, one of the things is just so everybody's aware, uh, the public knows, the board knows, at the end of the school year, we no longer have the free lunches from the USDA. So everybody is gonna to have to go back to paying for their lunches again. Um, that's gonna be a shock. And I wanna make sure that everybody's aware of that now, instead of coming next fall, we're sitting here wondering why we're getting this lunch bill. It's because of the fact that the, the USDA is not paying for that anymore. They did come out with the recommendations for uh, USDA targeted lunch prices. This is what we're, we're ultimately shooting for is that, that taller amount is $3.31 per student lunch. So just so you're aware of that. I reached out to Deb Eglin from EPI and she came back with the target price is $3.31. Um, they can, we have to increase at least 10 cents, uh, but you can't do more than, I mean, we can't force us to do more than 10 cents basically. Uh, but she put that reminder that we haven't increased the price for the last two years since we've had three lunches. And as of right now, um, Food prices are up at eight point five percent. So, what do you mean by target price? That's what they suggest, or that's the minimum to cover it, or what does that mean? That is what they think that you would need to cover your food prices, but we are already over that at three forty-five. Sure. Um, just so we can, in comparison, our state reimbursement rate, right, our USDA reimbursement rate, was um, four fifty. Sure. And so. Each year, well, not so going back two school years ago, we were paying for school lunches. Yes. And, and then when after the pandemic hit, they eliminated paying for school lunches. Yes. So for the remainder of the school year and all of this, this current school mm -hmm. year, uh, no, no students, no families have been required to pay. The only payment they would have to make is during that snack drinker if they take an extra lunch, which okay. is 25 cents. So, it's actually two, two, yeah. two in like a quarter. Two, yeah. two whole school years plus the, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. so plus the, the end of 2020, the last couple months yeah. of 2020. And a history of why we got to 345 is that um, every year they have a tool. USDA did a, a spreadsheet or a tool where you plug in your historical prices and your current expenses, and then it pops up to a range of the recommended prices. So the last time we did that, 
that's where the 345 came up for lunch and the dollar 90 for breakfast um i asked if i could get that spreadsheet again this year but of course there's no i mean two years of data is is not relevant so anyway so that's why i just kind of put that she did the only thing she did tell me was that uh, the milk prices that we should probably go up to 40 cents to 25 cents is not covering so do we have to make this decision today? No, um, I am sending out letters though this week um, to inform people. So I, mean, I, I don't know if you feel there would be an increase or if it's the same. I mean, either way. But no, it's not important. It just needs to be done before July 1. Um, free and reduced uh, lunch applications, meal applications. I can start accepting those after July 1st to be in effect for next year. So keeping in mind, okay, so if we look at the bottom of this page, um, breakfasts have been 210 and 250 for students and adults, lunches 280, 290, 375 for adults. And the proposed increases are- um, So the, the bottom one would be the new prices. So the current ones are up on top. Oh, I see it. And so then we would be increasing it by I 20 see. cents. So I did it backwards. I see. No, <laughs> so I see. It would be okay. So you're proposing this based on, you know, the we, we don't have to go up 20 cents. Nope. We could, but we must go up at least 10. Yes. Okay. If we feel an increase is needed. You know, like I said, that the tool or whatever always told you your age, but USDA recommended. And somewhere I thought I saw a percentage of, okay, in, in the narrative below, there's, um, Oh, there's some percentages, but keeping keeping in mind that whatever increase we give, we 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 request or we we decide upon is a 100% increase for for those who haven't been paying for lunches for Basically. two years. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Even if it's only a five percent increase, it's a 100% increase. Yep. But uh, so I'm understanding this right, though this. The number, the 260 is from two, it would actually be from three, from when this is in effect, is from three. From schools, the COVID year, yeah. Three <laughs> cycles ago. Yeah. So not only have our costs up 8% this year, that's not counting what it was when we were charging this. And then when, when we were charging this, we weren't maintaining the program either. It was no. not it was, close yeah. to yeah. paying for itself. Every year we have had to transfer funds from general funds to the hot lunch fund. Yes. Yes. All right. Do you does the board wish to act on this today or would you rather defer this until June? So the letters that you're going to send out, is that just so formal? Yes. So um because everyone has balances in their lunch accounts that's been there. So I'll send everyone a lunch account balance so they know how much money's been there. And then in addition to informing them that meals will be charged next year. Um, and then I would put a blurb in that these are the current charges, but or fees, um, but increase, um, prices may increase, just so everyone's aware. And then information on the free and reduce um, applications and encourage people to do that. So some districts I've heard in the past require all families to complete the free and reduced lunch uh, application, even if they are in no by no means would they ever qualify. Just I don't know why if it's a stigma that people don't want to fill it out, but there, I, as I understand it, many people do not fill it out, even though they may qualify, and um, they just don't. So some districts require everyone to do so. That you experience with that reason? Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason for is just because of the free and reduced, that's not the true reason of why you're filling that out. That form that you're filling out is more so to help with our Title I dollars. Um, so it's actually tied to ties, and they've, they've come up with that that's not a very good tie to tie it to our lunches, um, but it, it, it does tie directly with how much we receive as a district from Title I. Okay. And All so is, title dollars. Are, is there any thought that we should require all to complete that? We try to push it out as much as we can. Um, anyone who was on our list last year will send them an application and request to fill out again. I know we do a couple of blasts. Um, the last couple of years has been really hard because everyone 
why, you know, and we did try to do the explanation on the federal funding and different things like that. So, I mean, all schools are, you know, especially the last couple of years of how do we get their applications in and make sure that they're getting their numbers. Would it be helpful to you if we um, approve these prices today so you can include them in the communication? Yeah, like I said, either way, I would either tell them that price increase may occur or um, get it in the ones. But it's not increased in the last two years. They have to, they have to, right? They, there's no, they don't, well, I should say it was, um, yeah, we cannot make you increase prices more than 10. So, yeah. I mean, you could do. So, we have to increase have at, to, least 10, at least 10 cents. You could do five or, yeah. I think, I mean, in my mind, uh, I don't think 20 cents is going to be enough. We already know that we're going to be short on our budget everywhere. So, do you. Food is just going to keep going up as the year goes on. Do you have a motion to approve or to change the recommendations or? I mean, even that uh, they're suggesting 331 and we're only getting to 210. Well, well, what target student price? So lunch would be lunches. But but the target student price is 331 and our student, our proposed student prices are 280 and 290, adult 375. I, my inclination would be to move forward with the proposed uh, prices here. I, I know we will be short on our lunch fund. Um, I would, I think, investing in food for kids that maybe don't get as enough to eat. Their 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 grocery bill at home is going to be going up too, and I, I think, um, well fed kids at school will will do better. I'd rather look for other places to stay. Um, so is there a motion to accept uh, or to approve the proposed uh, prices at the bottom of the uh, spreadsheet, the 210 for breakfast, 280 and 290 for kids lunches, uh, and the, the 40 cents for snack. Uh, Heinbach moves to approve the, the proposed uh, lunch prices for 20. 223. Is there a second? I will second. Our naval seconds. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. All right, next uh, on our agenda is an update uh, regarding the school resource officer position. About a year ago, we approved this position and we've had a school resource officer on staff for the entire school year. And I thought it would be appropriate for us to have an update. Uh, I don't know who's gonna come to the podium, if it's uh, Chief O'Brien or, uh, <laughs> or, or the esteemed mayor. Well, look, Chief O'Brien takes Good morning. Um, so Sonia and I spoke kind of in a little update about the SRO program. Um, kind of like we talked about last year, it was very hard to get somebody hired in law enforcement. It's crazy, like you said, in all professions right now. Um, I kind of want to just let the administration talk about what they saw for positive, negatives, concerns, and stuff like that. Because uh, you guys are the ones that have to see the program work and not work and stuff like that. So. Before you turn it over to administration, I want to make sure that we give Matt the recognition that he deserves because he did apply for the COPS grant and, and was awarded that. So that is also helping cover the cost of our SRO. So I think you, you need to be recognized for that as well. So thank you. Thank you. It's just super nice to have Jeremy. Um, in the school building for us, he helps me out on the playground. He unlocks and locks the, the fence. He takes care of those little things that, you know, in the day to day that he helps us out. But just him being there, I think in the elementary, it's more of a pre preventative. And I don't mean that it's not in the high school, but my kids see him and see him as being somebody that works here and is part of us. 
Um, last week I had an incident that I had to refer to law enforcement and Jeremy was out of the building. So I had to go right to Matt, which, you know, to have Jeremy here is super nice because he just, it's a seamless part of it. I would have just contacted him, which I did contact him when he was at home <laughs> and I had to bug him and he just referred me on the map, which just to have that resource and to know he's there to help me is huge because, you know, um, of past incidents, you know, it's, he's the person that can guide me in those. Um, I haven't had to use him as much for discipline things in the elementary. Things have gone really very smoothly, but just to have him here and be part of us, I think is very much appreciated. Yeah. Told you when bring this. Things on. Um, to echo some things that uh, Mrs. Sell said, and other things that I've talked to both Jeremy and Matt on. Uh, you know, the Dare program is going to be monumental um, to get that implemented to our school and it's in the first year now but throughout the course of you know the next several years that'll be paramount for our kids to have that backing a couple other things i want to give a shout out to jeremy um he's fantastic in relationships he's constantly in classrooms he's with students um, he's all over the place he's not just um, there to be like the bad guy he's actually there getting to know the students um, and anything i've ever asked of jeremy to help me out or anybody at school, like he said, absolutely. So whether that's him helping me out with junior high lunch, um, covering Fayette for a little bit, running here, running there, dropping a kid off and missed the bus, like he's he's all hands on deck. And so that's very important for us, both relationship, but also to help in all areas. Um, my difficulty, and Jeremy can attest to this, is I've got three floors and 239 kids. So there's a lot of places to go. Um, things to be a part of, and that's difficult with one person, but having two people, Jeremy and I, to be in the hallways has added a whole other level of safety to our kids, both in the building and outside the building. So, um, Jeremy and I talked, I mean, last week you were you were laid up, and I mean, I noticed a big time you not being in the building. Um, so I, I would just like to give a thank you to Jeremy um, for not only doing a great job in his first year, but bringing ideas to the table and wanting to do the best for our kids and wanting to make sure they're safe. So without that, uh, it would it would be a very difficult task. So I appreciate you guys' ability to not only bring him in, but support the program that we have here. Chief O'Brien and Mayor, the same same for you guys. So you could... yeah, that was good for Just having justice. Well, <laughs> 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 well, compliments and small doses with Jeremy. <laughs> I don't know. I was just gonna want to raise. So, if there's any concerns, grievances, anything like that, I think this would be the time to bring it up. Or anything anybody wants to see improve. Um, like I said, we didn't get an officer hired for at least a few months into the school year, but our priority was the school. I told you guys last summer. So he was working part day shift. I was putting in a lot of hours covering a lot of things with day shift too. But I mean, he was at ball games, events, all those sorts of things because we wanted to make sure that relationship was strong between the city. And the school because that's what we said we were going to do for you so i think it went really well on the dare program i think it's going to be awesome it's not just about the program I and mean, that's the relationship building with the law enforcement and the kids I and mean, going to the forest game was awesome um we got the tour you know the fire department and the police department up there kids had a blast i think those connections and relationships will be huge and we're going to start to see that as um, kids get older and stuff too um so that, that's I just want to bring up if there's any questions or concerns about anything. If you've heard anything, if you want to bring anything up right now, we got the mayor here too. Like I said, we just want to make sure we keep this open communication, make sure there's nothing not being said about the program and stuff like that. So, so it sounded to me like when the, the principal explained <clears throat> um, that some of the time that they have spent in the past on behavior incidents, the more serious behavior incidents has been relieved. And so they are able, is would it, would it be fair to say you're able to do your jobs better with with, with the presence of Officer Sixford? Um, for my end, it still involves me. It's just nice to have Jeremy here alongside us should things have to go to the criminal side of things. So I don't want to think that I'm passing everything off to Jeremy to handle the big stuff. That's not the case. But you know, if we have field to look at it, it's nice that we both can crack up hours of times with just one person more. We can interview multiple people at one time and separate them. So there's both types of things there. And well, I mean, it, it, we do we work together on stuff. I haven't had, like I said, as many incidents as Mr. Beta has been lucky enough to have, but I uh, when I needed him to help me with something, he's there. Um he does the buses, he does help out on the playground, he helps in the lunchroom. He's always just there. So, you know, it's super nice. So from the city.
city's perspective, is this going to be sustainable? Yes. Yep. So, like I said, the benefit to after the school year is, um, like I told you, is we'll have two officers on on weekends, which is going to help with um, officers staying um, more ready to respond. Things are getting crazy. Domestics are going up and stuff too. So once the school year is over, we'll have a day shift, night shift guy for um, weekends, which in the past it was one officer on for 72 hours straight. So trying to mentally prepare yourself, get yourself to relax, which is possible. So I think that's going to be a huge improvement for safety in the community as well. So, but like I said, the um, cops grant was approved, but um, it's just a three-year program where they want you to get ready to be able to sustain the program. Um, so that, I think that's great that we got that, and it should help even the city. I think. And, and the city knew that going in, and that, and I think I said that before too, is that we want to make sure that this is sustainable without grants because those come and go, and like you said, it went away. And so we have put ourselves in a position going into the future that it will be sustainable without it as well. We kind of hope that in these years that we do have the grant that we can kind of catch up a little bit, get extra resources, equipment, whatever we need to sustain us when we might not have that. But yeah, as far as the city is concerned, this program is here to stay. And throughout the school year, there's been all sorts of just different situations. And myself, Mr. Getz, has been in open communication. We've made sure our attorneys are involved, make sure we're doing everything possible by the book, by procedure, by policy. And we've had no issues with that. So I think that's been great that we've had that relationship. So and the community side of it too, it's, it's a great resource to have Jeremy here and Matt as well, getting to know the kids because we see them, they see them on calls out of the community. So they have that relationship with these kids that can make some of them difficult situations and calls go a little bit easier for them. So it's, it's one more good thing that adds to this program that helps the entire community, not just the school. It's, it's, it's helping community-wide. Mr. Getz. Yeah, I think another thing that people don't realize in it is school rules and policies are not always the same, exact same as what is in the law. So there's also that time, a lot of time where as we're going through this is, do we refer it, do we not refer it? So it gives us a really quick reference of, hey, what is, is this something that we truly need to refer? It helps us know that before we involve the Oaks Police Department, which then it becomes more official. Where with it being with Jeremy being part of the school employees, it sometimes helps us give us that buffer of, you know what, maybe this isn't something that is, it, it's serious, but it's something that needs to be taken care of in-house or, you know what, this is this is pretty serious. We may want to extend this on to the next level. So it really helps give you that buffer and it really adds that, that extra piece there. I wasn't here last year, so I can't say last year or this year, but just one of those, that's a big piece, that's a big buffer there. Mr. Getz and I know the juvenile process is going to be changing about referrals of crimes in schools and stuff like that too. So we're already talking about how we can implement things within the school um, to combat that. Also learn now that unruly kids will not be juvenile referrals to court, it'll be going to human services as well. So a lot of different things now that we're going to have to um, have challenges of trying to figure out the future here. So but it's not here yet. So that's why we're trying to tackle it now to make sure the school and law enforcement has a plan as well. Okay, any other questions, board members? Thank you for working with us and getting through a good, good first blood. year. Thank you for <laughs> supporting us in this project and having go through that helps our department immensely. And it's, it's good to see. So well, thank you for the community for and the, the, kids, the kids and families are in the community, uh, not just in the school. So. Right. Uh, Robert is asking to be excused, I think. So thank you. I didn't hear <laughs> All right. Um, moving on then to the activities director update. Is um, Robin coming? I thought so, but I guess yeah. she's I know she's got a lot of stuff going on okay. this time of year, so she should may have space to help. Should we go through that or should I, we do that? Going, um, the big thing that I did with that is I asked the administration because I wasn't here last year and I think Robin probably had the coaches show up because of that same reason. Um, I could be wrong, but maybe not. Uh, I think it's important for the coaches to speak on, on last year versus this year. And I know administration would probably like to speak on that a little bit too. Um, just compare last year to this year. Anybody want to speak? As far as having Robin full-time versus part-time. I mean, if you want to speak, let's have you come up to the, to the coding place. 
Um, I, I noticed it's, it's a lot cleaner communication, and I can't speak for the coaches, but to have somebody full time that can communicate throughout the course of the day when events happen. Also, somebody there that can cover us in a pinch, especially here spring season when we need subs. Um, Robin's been all over the place with um, subbing here, subbing there, covering here. But more importantly, I think the communication and planning is really good. I talked to Robin, said, I think you're doing a heck of a job in your first year trying to learn what you don't know and trying to play up speed. But I guess the ultimate people I ask would be the coaches um, and how things are going. But from my side of things in the high school and stuff, it's been, uh, it's been really good. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we may want a little bit more detailed financial report at the next board meeting, but um, from what I've understood, the, uh, the fundraising effort has been successful. Um, I've seen many sponsors that have really surprised me. Like I never, I never dreamed that the was it the Rutland, the Rutland Sportsman Club would donate to uh, our district activities, and um, I know it was a big lift to get uh, the board to do a full-time AD, um, but I think there's a lot of, uh, she's worked, she's done well, she's raised funds, she's been here, uh, from what I've heard, there are already, um, uh, the activities are getting put on the calendar for fall, and that makes planning much easier, so uh, I, I would, I'm, I think it's gone well, but I would like a little more um, detailed financial review of it at the June meeting. Any comments from anyone else? Is this going to be sustainable with a 10 month position? Um, I know we had gone to that to start with. Is this something that we're going to have to look at the full time year round? I think at this point, Robin's asked to kind of keep it the 10 month, anyways, um, and then we just do hourly afterwards. Um, so I, I think at this point, we'll continue that. I, I don't know if we've got enough data to be able to say we, we haven't even had a full summer with, right. that, with her. I think that needs to happen before we could even say, oh, well, you know what, it, it does need to go to 11 month or, or 12 month. I don't know if we'd need a full 12, but I could see 11 month potentially. But I think we need to see if you're this summer and see where we're at. Good question. Thank you. All right. Um, next item, on, unless there's any, any other questions or comments. Did the coach just want to Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next item on the agenda is the business manager job description. Um, at the last, at the special meeting, we assigned um, directors Nagel and Rosendahl to get together. Volunteer. They volunteered to, thank you very much for doing that, um, to review and update the business manager job description. Uh, they have proposed a couple of fairly minor changes, it looks like, to um, the job description. And that was in your packet. Is there, would you like to highlight any of that? Or is there a motion to approve those changes? We just thought that a lot of the stuff was pretty generic and we didn't want to go so detailed on, you have to do this, 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 and this, but, you know. Um, so we just did a little bit of cleanup. Okay. Our motion to approve the revisions to the business manager job description. I look moves to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Nagel seconds. Is there any discussion? I'll just note that there were some additions uh, added, uh, language related to century code sections, uh, some minor revisions in the uh, budget preparation. Um, Maintaining confidentiality was added um, of appropriate information and providing assistance with social media and website maintenance was added. So, um, and advertising. Oh, yes, advertising uh, for job openings, which uh, are things that the business manager has done and we expect to continue to be done. So, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes with Thorpe absent. Uh, we added to the agenda item J, business manager duties. Um, I understand that um, directors Rosendahl and Nagel got together with April and uh, reviewed this list of duties uh, by month, May, June, and July, what that's needed. 
um, are there recommendations as to, and April's last official day with us is this coming Friday, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and guess what? We might need to get payroll out and some things and we're not even scheduled to interview until May 23rd. So are there recommendations with, with at least how we will proceed for the month of May? Um, well, basically we're gonna continue with her having the duties that are on this list. So after, after May 15th, um, she work on the list of priority items which are on this list, which will be paid for at an hourly rate because her contract salary will be over. So it'll be at an hourly rate as she has time to do it um, from May, June, and July, correct? June? That's kind of what we came up with until we have a full-time candidate that can take over the duties which she would also help train in, which during that time she would be paid the hourly wage as well. Okay. Are, are there any alternatives available to us that we know of? Um, that would be the Mr. Gex. Yeah, I've reached out to Luke with Priya. Um, obviously, uh, Seek did not have anybody available. And, um, he said that he does have two, two business managers that are retired that would be in this type of position. So they're they're doing full-time for some districts that these business managers are, are currently taking over. Uh, so in like in situation where we're in with April leaving, um, this would be another example of how that service would be used. So it would be another avenue if you wanted to use that. I've, I've reached out to loop a little bit, but I haven't heard back from him about um, this list if, if there was anything that he had. Seeing that he would like to know um, they do provide training for new business managers as well. I think the school board association would maybe have a piece with that too. Um, I, I'm my only concern with that is like if April is at her full time job, we got to respect her and her job as well, um, and we don't want to take away from April on that aspect. So that would be one thing is if we're training a new business manager in, our questions are going to come during the day when April's trying to do her other job and. I just want to make sure that the board is fair to April in that aspect as well. Okay. Um, my inclination is because we're, we're not even interviewing until the week of May 23rd, and we have no commitment from CREA that they can do any of this for us. I, I would suggest that at least through the month of May, uh, we would rely on April's experience to be able to efficiently do this after her work hours with prioritizing the, the, the items that are most, uh, of course, time sensitive and need to be done. What, what hourly rate did, did you arrive at? It was like 30, $35 an hour. Yeah, current rate. I would add to that that um, the election needs someone capable of handling that. Would there be anyone in um, in the office that could take that role? I think April knows that better than anybody. <laughs> um, I, I can make an arrange right to be here for the uh, election. For the uh, many positions to be flexible, so by the time that I need that day off, that I should be able to have it enough that I could, um, especially with you know, my relationship with the workers. And everything. Well, the workers are the same as they've been. I, mean, I would <laughs> think if they got. You know, if everything was there, mm -hmm. if they got started, yep. they could do the it. job and then come yeah. back later and do the counting. Yeah. Uh, and who knows, we may have someone, we may have someone hired by them if we. And then it would be a good thing. Yeah. Basically, you just have to be here as the election official if there's a problem with the election. I guess that I can complete it in the All right. So, uh, is there a motion then to? Um, Proceed with uh, having April continue the, the needed duties through at least through the month of May uh, at a rate of $35 per hour, uh, as well as overseeing the election. Section seven. I will make that motion. Nagel moves to uh, approve that. Is there a second? I'll second it. Rosendahl seconds. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. 
Motion passes. Thank you. One thing that is not on those duties, um, if we don't have anybody hired, we need a clerk for two That's not so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, yes. Yeah. Robert will do it. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Okay, um, policies. We do have one first reading in our packet, and that is a required policy, which is an amendment. We already have it. It was last. It was adopted on in June of 21 and already has major um, amendments requested of us. So that is a first reading. Were there any concerns or questions about that proposed first reading of the IDC data protection and security breaches? Is there a motion to approve that as the first reading of policy IDC? Heimbach moves to approve. Is there a second? second. Rosendahl seconds. Any discussion? Is there any discussion? Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. There is one new policy that I don't believe we're going to be acting on as a first reading. Uh, it it's a GACG, it says required, but is only required of us if we want to offer credit for educational opportunities that take place outside the classroom through a sponsoring entity, which I think is something that we are interested in doing, but I'm not sure we're really already in prepared to launch the program. So what are your thoughts about this? And I didn't get a chance to ask you, but that summer program, the co-op work experience, that is work, they're getting that educational credit through their work, not through the district, right? Senator issues that credit to the summer experience. So the 150 hours for half the credit. Mostly gets two credits and go for close to three or four years. Okay. So they're not required to and that, that's that's been done for years. Right. And that's kind of what this is talking about. So I don't know if that would be something or a reason to be able to have or why we would want to adopt that is because it is already being partially done just not through us as a consent so really technically i think they would need to be looking at that we're not quite to this point yet but i think that that's already approved as part of their course offerings and um it's all it's supervised by a teacher the, the learning takes place outside in jobs or on farm placement, but that's been going on for years. So I don't see that this policy is needed for that, but um, we ultimately issue the credit based on their recommendation, right? So they, they the, the credit comes from Oaks Public Schools, but- right. We put on a transcript, yes, but a credit gets, um, comes from the center based on the grades of their, you know, their experience, how went over the summer. So I get that from the center, we input the third grade once it goes on the transcript. Okay. I, I think this is something that we're moving towards, but I'm not sure we're ready for a first reading. Something we need to think about and explore, maybe have a deeper dive at a summer retreat or something. Fair enough? Okay. All right, then we'll move on to the uh, minutes of the two meetings. The two minutes in here? Yep, yeah. okay. Uh, minutes of both the April 12th regular and the April 26th special meetings were in your packet. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So oh, uh, Nagel moves to approve the two minutes. Is there a second? Second. Buck seconds. Is there any discussion? Um, was the regular meeting. So on the second one, it's it says regular meeting minutes at the top, but I believe it's oh. a special meeting. Oh, and then no, there's yeah. no adjournment time. Oh, <laughs> I love that. 
have to, you have to go look at that. It was like eight that. twelve eight or seven, seven twelve eight. Well, no, we only we no, met at seven thirty. Okay, so oh. seven forty two. Oh, really <laughs> okay, please update so the the yeah. the time and add and make it a special meeting and add the closing time, whatever that was. If are there any other description? Yeah. Is there any other discussion? Corrections. So the motion is to approve the minutes of the April 12th regular April 26th special meeting as corrected. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Uh, financial reports will look at the reconciliation balance sheet and revenue and expense reports together. Is there a motion to approve those three reports? I'll make a motion. Rosendahl moves to approve those three reports. Is there a second? Nagel seconds. All right. Is there any? Are there any questions or discussion on the reconciliation, the balance sheet, and the revenue and expense report? Anything that needs to be highlighted, brought to the attention of the board. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. And both reports are approved. Uh, the review of bills, there were bills, uh, several pages of invoices listed in our packet. And uh, also a page handed to us this morning of bills that need to be paid. Is there a motion to approve those bills? I'll move to approve the bill. Heimbuck moves to approve the bills as presented. Is there a second? second. Nagel seconds. Is there any discussion or questions on these bills? Any questions or discussion? One more time, any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes and the bills are approved. With that um, review of future meeting and important dates. The school election is on Tuesday, June 7th and voting uh, in advance can be done mm -hmm. by getting a ballot here at the school. Uh, the regular meeting date again has been moved from, uh, by, by law we must meet 13 days after the election. So rather than having two meetings in June, we would have one meeting, our regular meeting and election canvassing to be held on Monday, June 20th. And we were going to set an uh, evening time. Um, would 6.30 be okay? Seven o'clock meetings, I mean, it just feels like we could get there earlier. We could try to get done earlier. All right, All right. 6.30, June the 20th. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Uh, it would be appropriate for us to say thank you to April for her for being with us here at her final board meeting <laughs> as our business manager. And thank you for your gracious willingness to continue and help us out while we transition. Um, and best wishes in your, in your new position. And please let us know if we're too big of a burden on you. I appreciate you all to help us get through this time. So with that, I will adjourn the meeting at 8.25 a.m. Write that down. I will. <laughs> <laughs>